What's up, CU Sports Nation? Justin Guerrero live from my command center in South Boulder. Um, just want to make it abundantly clear, one of these days I will get my hands on one of those, uh, I think they're uh, fat heads, like just those backdrop type things. So the uh, the Pittsburgh flexes will, will stop uh, soon enough, but for the time being, you'll have to deal with all my Pittsburgh posters and then uh, toot and common above my, my right shoulder. But Point of the video today, it's been slow on the, the offer trail for, for Colorado. To my knowledge, there hasn't been one actual uh, offer announced today for the Buffaloes. So I just wanted to dive a little bit into uh, the, the depth situation at defensive back and uh, safety. Of course, in the last uh, couple weeks, the Buffs have gone down three bodies in the form of Kevin George entering the transfer portal, Dante Wigley deciding not to return to the program, and finally Hassan Hippolyte being dismissed from the, from the football program for a violation of team rules, which uh, much speculation could be shown there. Um, I'd probably rather not. I wouldn't even know where to start with what the hell he did to, to get kicked off the team. So we'll just leave that as it is. Um, but w yeah, Wigley was a bit on the uh, abrupt or unannounced side, if you will. I mean, the... The football team's Twitter handle even like put out like a, a happy birthday um, image in a tweet like hours before it was announced that he was not going to return to the team. So not that there's really too much, I guess, to decipher from that. But I guess, yeah, if, if you know that's coming, why go through the trouble of putting out that tweet to a guy who's going to be a non-factor here in, in, in a couple hours? But point being... The body count has, has gone down for the Buffs. Depth has uh, decreased here in the last couple weeks. And so in terms of personnel in 2019, either guys that are going to be geared up and ready to go, ready to step on the field come the CSU game on August 30th, or get to summer camp and pretty much become uh, impact performers, or hopefully uh, within the next couple months, I don't want to start ringing the alarm bells just yet, but it, it is a bit of a concern that the buffs are, are kind of in the territory where, I mean, if if some unfortunate happenings occur in the form of, of injuries and who knows what the next couple months will, ha will have in store, it I, I think it warrants a bit of a concerned outlook. And now there's a dude named Justin Ford. He is a JUCO kid who would be joining a team's roster by the time of uh, August camp. I'm told he plans to enroll in whatever school he decides uh, by the end of June. So clock's ticket on him. He's a three-star dude from uh, Huntington Beach, California, and he recently had Colorado in his top five. And just from what I'm kind of gathering, um, the, the visits that he has taken within the last few weeks, he apparently is slated to visit uh, West Virginia here in the coming days. And recently, Visited Auburn, visited Utah as well. At least in my humble opinion, I'm, I'm calling it. I don't think he's putting on the black and gold. I, I do not see Justin Ford coming to Colorado. So at least in, in the realm of like a Juco guy, that someone that could just bolster the, the roster, the depth chart, come to summer camp and just make a case to, to be in the equation, if you will, I, I, I think it might be fair to to kind of push Justin Ford out of that. But on the brighter side, um, Mark Perry is a guy that I've increasingly just kind of gotten on, on my personal radar, and I'm sure all of you know about him. Um, he's going to be joining the team as a freshman in 2019, and I know we, we've kind of had these these back and forths um, in regards to specifically Brendan Lewis's commitment and how he's a guy that wants to make a difference right off the bat, not a guy coming here to, to sit on the bench for a few years and then make a splash Mark Perry seems like that kind of guy who at the absolute minimum could be a body, could be someone that's capable of giving it decent, I guess at the bare minimum, minutes to Mel Tucker, to Tyson Summers, to this defense to kind of just help alleviate some of the question marks that, that we're seeing in the secondary. And of course, Darian Rakestraw seems for all intents and purposes like a lock at the safety position. But on the other side of things, we have Trey Udofia, who only this spring was converted from corner to safety and I'm just gonna pause for a, a little tangent on him if there's one guy that I would be willing here and now in, in mid to late May to give the benefit of the doubt to to maybe just uh to give a personal blessing to say I have faith in you it, it's it's Udofia honestly um 
I know he had gotten he had gotten some flack for his 2018 campaign. Um, certainly, flashes of effectiveness combined with just I mean lackluster performances across the board. But I'm willing to wager here now. I see Trey Adelphia fitting nicely, being more comfortable in the safety position. Um, I mean, he's a guy I think who whose game is a lot more centered around tackling, around open field tackling. So I'm going to go out on a limb and, and, and give him a boat of confidence um, in his uh, recent position change. And kind of on the same side of that coin, we have Aaron Maddox, who he and Udofia combined played a little over 450 snaps collectively on defense last year. So there is this question mark, especially at the safety position opposite uh, Darian Rakestraw, of what what kind of experience we're going to see, what kind of confidence we're going to see among the guys who are going to be seeing the field the most. Now, in addition to, to Mark Perry, the Buffs do have a guy named Trustin Oliver, a local kid from Parker, I believe, who's going to be entering the fold. He was recruited by Darren Cheverini. And on that note, let's just go ahead and say, I know I think it's easy to assume, and, and I certainly have done this just in, in my couple weeks on the job. Okay, re recruited by Chev, most likely going to be a wide receiver. Well, and I've tried to I've tried to allude to in in the past on the boards, and uh, I mean I, I think in the the first video I did, Cheverini, I mean is a is one of the top recruiters that, that the Buffaloes have, and for for obvious reasons, I mean. He's a guy that you, I, you want to play for, that you want to to have him on your your coaching staff. So, the fact that um, that Oliver here committed to the Buffs, I think it was last uh, last July um, in, of 2018, he's going to be entering the mix here, potentially giving the Buffs some uh, some wiggle room at the defensive back situation. But just getting back to uh, to Dante Wigley now, I have kind of just observed the the board conversations going on regarding him and. I mean, people have kind of fallen on one side of the line or the other with a contingent of folks saying, good riddance, you were terrible. I'm not in any way disappointed that you're leaving. And of course, the other folks who were kind of like, wish you best of luck, whatever, wish you the best. Um, I certainly don't have a problem with Dante Wigley. I, I've never been the kind of guy who really wants to just rip people for the sake of ripping them. But that said, I mean, he he was picked on, I, I think is a good way to put it, last year by, by quarterbacks. I think he was a guy who, when um, opposing coordinators, quarterbacks, offenses were in the film room, I think he was a guy that you could point the finger at and say, okay, other teams before us have have somewhat had, had their way with him, had our way with him. We're going to look to do the same. So Wigley's gone, Kevin George is gone, and of course, Hassan Hippolyte is gone. And now it's pretty much down to what happens next. And not this isn't in the realm of uh, 2019 people, but there's a guy named Tanner Hooker who apparently has been in talks with some of the coaching ta coaching staff um, at CU. He's a Louisiana guy in New Orleans, I believe. So he's a dude to keep an eye on. Of course, won't be a factor here come 2019. But essentially, that's the main question I think that... Uh, defensively the the buffs need to round out in the coming weeks in the coming months yeah i think it would be really really nice if they could get a juco guy that would be able to take the field in august with them and be prepared to uh to make a difference right off the bat just getting someone of a of a position of a experience who's got a couple years of juco play under their belt ready to come in here in 2019 and make a difference for reasons regarding depth and just the necessity of having as, as many guys as possible, impact reformers, hopefully, one would one would certainly hope. Um, that's going to be something I, I'm going to be keeping an eye on here in the, the weeks to come. I, I really would like to see the Buffs get a Juco guy that they could throw into the mix at secondary. There's going to be more on Hooker. I'm going to talk about him a little bit, uh, or rather share a story uh, from some uh, some Rivals affiliates that might uh, shed some light on where, where he might be going, but... Closing statements, I, I don't expect Justin Ford, unfortunately, the, the Huntington Beach Juco kid. I, I don't see him coming to Colorado, unfortunately. We'll keep our fingers crossed, see what happens in the weeks to come. But that's my biggest takeaway. I think the Buffs would do well to sign a Juco guy to be able to, 
to get on the field in August and, and join this team, make a difference in 2019. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, I'll catch you guys soon.